Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to move forward and discuss some important aspects related to organization theory. So as I said in my first or previous lesson, uh, we have divided the entire uh, management syllabus into organization theory, organization behavior and human resource management. In this particular series, I am covering organization theory. We have already covered some aspects related to an organization, what exactly is an organization in the first lesson. And now we are going to cover the aspect of management. What exactly is management and how does it differ from an organization? And there are certain theories of management, certain functions of management, which we will be covering in this lesson as well as in the future lessons. So let us start with the session and talk about management as a whole. As you can see here, uh, the slide here says what exactly is management? Management basically refers to managing or looking after various resources an organization has. What are the different kinds of resources an organization need or has at its disposal? Human resources like people, it has financial resources, it has physical resources like various assets, for example, a car and information that is a new resource, basically data that is a new resource that has developed over a period of time because of internet. So these are the major resources that an organization has and organizing or keeping them at your disposal or managing these resources is the worker of management, is the work of management which is done by manager. Okay, I hope you have understood. So for example, uh, we have been talking about the example of Apple. If we take that forward, then managing all the human resources uh, in the organization, in the company, uh, whether it's techies, whether it's the sales team, whether it's marketing team, whether it's designing team, whether it's manufacturing team, all the human resources involved there, all the physical resources involved there, let's say a lot of computers, let's say a lot of hardware and software being involved, let's say a lot of machines which are assembling these uh, computers that are being uh, sold to you, financial resources, uh, from where is the company getting money, from where uh, is the company financing itself and where is the company investing in the future? Where is the revenue uh, that the company is earning going? Uh, where are the uh, profits going for the enterprise? All these are the works of a manager done under the activity of management. I hope you have understood this. Uh, I have simplified it a lot to you. So uh, managers, as uh, it is mentioned here, managers need to study and understand behavior on, of individuals and groups in an organization. And this is called as organization behavior. So uh, I had differentiated for you the uh, meanings of organization behavior versus organization theory. If you're talking about individuals uh, or groups in an organization, then it's organization behavior and management of those individuals and groups in the organization, their behavior comes under organization behavior that is also a part of management. Whereas at the same time, managing a business as a whole, whether it's human resources, whether it's physical, financial or any kinds of resources would come under management, the function of management as a whole. Both of them are highly related, but at the same time can be differentiated. Now there are two important points that you need to remember, very factual questions can be asked from this area. Number one, who is the father of management as a whole? Peter Drucker is considered the father of management, whereas father, father of general management is Henry Fayol. And at the same time, father of scientific management, which we will be reading in a while, father of scientific management is Taylor. So Taylor is considered as father of scientific management. Now there are functions of management. You have, I hope you have understood what exactly is management and how does it work. But what are the specific functions of management? People have given theories on that. So uh, Luther Gulick uh, has had also given a theory on that. Uh, I have uh, highlighted it here, which is called as postcorp. We'll be talking about postcorp as well. I have, uh, I'm going to talk about postcorp in controlling as well in detail. And uh, at the same time, there are five functions given uh, as under, which are planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. At the same thing has been reorganized and given by Henry Fayol as PO triple C. Okay. So these are all functions of management. The functions of management have been given by different people in different ways. So one is planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling, which is this. Second is by Henry Fayol, who says, no, it's not planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. Let's call it 
planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating and controlling. Although the functions are very similar to what planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling is talking about. And the third one is given by Gulick who says, okay, let's break down controlling further and we say planning, organizing, staffing, directing, which is the same as here, plus coordinating, reporting and budgeting. So post corp, coordinating, reporting and budgeting, this has been created by breaking down controlling further. Okay. So this is something that you need to understand and you need to create that structure in your mind before we move forward. So having understood that, okay, these are the structures or functions of management that have been given by different people. Let's talk about planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Planning is the first stage of management wherein uh, uh, you mentally create a plan as to, okay, this needs to be done. For example, I have a plan for the next three months that I need to cover the entire organization theory, organization behavior and HRM for you guys so that you can study before the exam starts and you are very well versed with the syllabus as well. So it's a mental process which determines what needs to be done in the near future. So you're deciding in advance, I'm deciding in advance for the next three months, okay, what I need to do, what I need to do, when do I need to do it. So for example, I've, I create a 13 week plan for students or 30 day plan for students or 60 day plan for students based upon when the exam is and you follow that. So I create day, day wise targets for all of you that is basically telling you when to do what and where to do. If you're involved in a physical uh, you know, exercise, then you decide where it, this needs to be done and how the results are to be evaluated. So planning is basically understanding and deciding in advance what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, when it needs to be done, where it needs to be done and everything related with, uh, uh, you know, realizing the activity in reality. Okay. It includes defining an organization's goals, established strategy. So bridges the gap between where we are today and where we want to go. This is the most important line from planning from where question can be asked. So the gap between where we are today, I have not done anything with regard to the syllabus and where I want to be in the near future. That is, I want to complete the syllabus in this span of time that is uh, undertaken or that comes under the activity of planning. The second one is organizing. Organizing deals with structure of authority and responsibility in an organization. What this means is that in organizing, you organize all the people, all the finances, all the assets, all the liabilities, all the data, everything in the organization by creating a hierarchy, by telling some people, okay, you have this kind of authority and by telling others, okay, you have this responsibility. So defining authority, responsibility, relationship, determining the activities to be performed by different people. So let's say you have five people who are, uh, 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 let's say, you know, teaching in the organization. I have an organization, there are five people, team members who are teaching in the organization, telling each one of them, okay, this is what you're going to teach. This is your expertise. This is where you are going to, uh, you know, study further, create good content, create good quality questions and teach on a regular basis. So these are the activities that I'm delegating to all of you. Uh, that is, that comes under organizing. Assignment of them to various individuals, creating a structure of authority and responsibility. I hope you have understood that. The third one is staffing. Staffing is the most simple uh, to understand uh, uh, function and it basically is recruiting, selecting uh, and then uh, developing and appraising the employees. For example, if you have an organization tomorrow, let's say uh, you start working in McKinsey in the HR department and you have the objective, you have the responsibility of going to all the colleges, whether it's graduation colleges, whether it's MBA colleges and hiring students from there. So the activity of a recruitment drive, starting a recruitment drive, wherein you are inviting all those students to apply in the organization, then selecting from among those students, let's say 100 students apply and you only need five students out of those 100. So creating the, uh, carrying out the interviews, carrying out the GD rounds, carrying out the written tests and determining what is the best fit uh, from among those students in your organization is selection. The third one is training. Uh, those students would have some preconceived notions, would have some pre-determined uh, methods of functioning, doing something and you need to break those or refine those in order to help them sync well with your organization that is training. 
and appraisal of perform uh, personnel or performance of employees basically you are telling them at the end of the year or the end at the, at the end of regular interval that okay uh, you were supposed to do this uh, you have done better or you have done worse what are the reasons that you could not achieve your targets let me tell you let you also give feedback so all those activities to and fro activities of finding out whether the performance of the employees is at par or better or worse than the predefined targets or not comes under staffing and the next one is directing basically giving instructions to employees on a regular basis uh, directing them guiding them influencing them supervising them and motivating them on a regular basis in order to ensure that they are able to perform to their best controlling uh, is the last uh, function of management wherein you measure the performance of employees and then you identify uh, where did they lack uh, why th was their performance better or worse than the standards that had been created and how do we improve further in the coming financial year all that comes under controlling controlling is one of the most important because without controlling planning of the next year cannot happen so planning is a continuous process in fact all these are so once you're done with controlling let's say you start with planning then uh, organizing staffing directing and then you move to controlling after you have identified the problems and everything you are going to plan again for the next financial year for the next three months your plans need to revise again and again on a continuous basis but this revision of plan cannot happen without controlling so because controlling is basically identifying where did you lack where did you do well and then adjusting your future plans according to your performance okay so controlling is one of the most important uh, functions of management that finishes the cycle and helps in restarting the cycle okay now controlling as i said gulick had divided controlling into three parts coordination reporting and budgeting and we will be talking about these in detail when we talk about controlling in the future we will be talking about controlling as a separate chapter as well okay uh, now henry mitzberg gave certain managerial roles which are very very important have been asked in the examination in the past as well so let's talk about these managerial roles there are three basic classifications so if you have a look at it uh, let's say this is uh, let me draw a graph for you henry mitzberg and he says okay there are three classifications number one interpersonal number two informational and then you have decisional so these are the three major classifications under which you have certain activities okay so that's the flow chart that you're looking at when you're talking about henry mintzberg's classification so the first one is interpersonal classification and in order to remember what interpersonal would include just try and understand from a layman's perspective what interpersonal would be interpersonal is when you're trying to talk to another individual so when you as a superior is trying to talk to another individual you are either motivating them or leading them or basically trying to help them achieve their objectives so when you are undergoing interpersonal role as a manager you are either motivating your subordinates or leading your subordinates and that's where the roles lie so the roles as an interpersonal function uh, of a manager are to act as a figurehead to act as a leader and to act as a liaison to act as a figurehead means to perform symbolic duties of legal and social nature which means let's say you have certain important documents that need to be signed so you're acting as the figurehead by signing those documents acting as the legal head of the organization let's say you have uh, some ngo wants to coordinate with your organization let's say you are running an education uh, <coughs> setup you have a school and uh, people from the nearby colony who are uh, who belong to economically or socially weaker sections want you to teach some of those students in your school so if you are representing your school in that scenario and saying yes or no or you know talking with those people you are acting as a figurehead for the organization so that's acting as a leader as a head of the organization as a leader when you're functioning as a leader then you're building relationships with outside outsiders as well as with insiders you're communicating regularly with the subordinates you're motivating the subordinates and you're teaching something or the other uh, regularly to the subordinates there you are acting as a leader and the third one is acting as a liaison officer which is also an interpersonal role because you're networking uh, with people outside workplace 
who can help you with information or who can help you with expanding your organization there also you are uh, acting as the leader or as the head of your organization therefore it comes under interpersonal role the second one is informational wherein the focus is on getting or dispersing information within the organization or outside the organization so spreading of information and the activity of obtaining information comes under informational so the first one is monitor then second one is disseminator that is spreading information and third one is spokesperson where you are talking uh, on behalf of the organization transmit information about the organization to others transmit information obtained internally or externally that is spreading the information and monitoring is to seek internal and external information about issues affecting the organization to regularly monitor what kind of information is flowing inside and outside the organization and the third one is decisional wherein you are taking action so whatever actions are required to be taken uh, you are taking those actions when you are acting as a decisional manager in the organization now it is very important to understand that all these these three major functions run simultaneously you cannot expect a leader or a head to act as a figure head and not simultaneously to act as a, you know a disseminator of information all these functions are running simultaneously because it's so complex in every situation you have to have different roles and different functions working together for it to be effective i hope you have understood it decisional is where you are taking decisions on behalf of the organization so where you are acting as an entrepreneur when you are acting as a disturbance handler let's say there is a strike and you go and talk to the employees who are on strike and then you come to terms and decide on something which is acceptable to both there you are acting as a disturbance handler resource allocator distributing resources of different kinds to different people in the organization whether it's financial whether it's uh, physical resources any kinds of resources and then you are acting as a negotiator uh, if you are acting as a leader of your organization in major negotiations and deciding uh, on behalf of the organization then also you are acting as a decisional uh, uh, working on decisional role for the organization so these are the three major roles interpersonal informational and decisional and then there are further sub classifications we will also have a look at certain questions related to this so that you understand okay these are the kinds of questions that can be asked in the examination but for that to happen you need to stick for a while and complete the lesson after which i will be covering certain questions as well now there are certain management skills also which were given by robert katz so the names also are important henry minsberg gave roles robert katz has given management skills there are three basic divisions of these management skills you have technical skills which are at lower level human skills which are most important at middle level and then you have conceptual skills which are most important or most heavily used at the top level of management so remember this technical skills low level human skills mid middle level and conceptual skills at top level okay so this is something that you need to remember very clearly now technical skills are skills which are related with doing something the way it needs to be done for example uh, let's say a car is being assembled maruti car is being assembled in manesar plant in near delhi now the activity of putting the tires on putting the gate on putting the windows on uh, you know putting the gear shift on basically assembling the entire car is a technical skill which is performed by first line management at at the lower level at the middle level are human skills basically managing all those employees who are working at the lower level and ensuring that they are happy they are satisfied with their work and they are most productive in the organization is the activity or responsibility of the middle level management comes under human skills their human skills need to be at their best they are not going to go and Uh, put the tires on the car but they have to ensure that the person putting the tires on the car is satisfied doing it is happy doing it does not create any problem or does not have uh, create any technical glitch while doing it and at the top level you have uh, conceptual skills which are most important wherein you are trying to understand how can the organization expand how can the organization come out with better vehicles how can the organization come out with vehicles which are accepted by the masses which solve certain problem for example electric vehicles coming out in large numbers now and in the next 5 years they're going to capture the entire market so conceptual skill at the top level would be in identifying how does the organization transform itself 
from a diesel or petrol uh, led uh, com uh, company to an electric vehicle led company okay so that comes under conceptual skills i hope you have understood through the example of the car L let's uh, practice certain questions the question here says luther gulick divided management function into eight major groups which was post corp as i explained to you and coined an eight letter word what is the full form of seventh letter of that word seventh here is r which stands for reporting so the correct answer is 3 Next question is productivity of newly employed workers were not as good as compared with productivity of earlier workers when we are talking about productivity of workers under functions of management that is planning organizing staffing directing and controlling why is the productivity of new workers not as good as old workers because the staffing must not have been done properly can you explain which of the management functions are not done properly here because you have recently hired new workers and you're not talking about the same workers whose productivity might have gone up or down you're talking about new workers therefore it directly relates to staffing so correct answer is four staffing you might be thinking that organizing or directing are also involved with raising or lowering down of productivity but then the question clearly says that you have a uh, newly you have have some newly appointed workers therefore Uh, staffing comes into play the next one is directing function is one of the most important functions of all the management functions explains which functions are included in the financing uh, sorry directing function so what all functions out of these come under directing measuring performance of persons within the organization by comparing against predefined standards and taking corrective actions measurement of performance comes under controlling functions pertain to recruitment selection training one of the easiest staffing giving instructions and providing leadership are activities dealing with influencing guiding supervising and motivating subordinates directing involves deciding in advance what to do when to do where to do and how the results are to be evaluated deciding in advance what is to be done planning determining the activities to be performed grouping them and assigning them to various individuals organizing so these are all uh, these are all activities that we have uh, divided and the correct answer is Three, which pertains to directing. Robert Katz, as I said, gave uh, human skills, technical skills, and conceptual skills. Classified management skills into three categories based on level of management. What are the skills middle level managers should focus upon? So, middle level managers have to focus on what? Have to focus on human skills, as I had explained. So, the answer is four human skills. conceptual management skills focus on what so there are technical human and conceptual as i have explained conceptual management skills at the top level what are the focus ability to resolve motivate and lead is that the focus no that is the focus of human skills at the middle level specialized knowledge and proficiency in dealing with the job that is the focus of lower level management who have technical skills management of behavior of human beings and study their psychological aspect that is again human skills middle level management uh, focus is on generating new ideas and strategy formulation the example of electric vehicles explains it very well it is the conceptual skills top level management so our answer is 4 henry mintzberg identified 10 basic roles of managers so the henry mintzberg roles that i explained to you basic classification into 3 and then further reclassification into three parts interpersonal informational and decisional which of the following are parts of interpersonal roles yeah, i hope you remember what all are parts of interpersonal interpersonal included figure head interpersonal included leader interpersonal included acting as a liaison so the answer is b c and e which is option 4 b c and e i hope you have understood whatever i have taught you so far in the next class we are going to talk about the next chapter when we'll get into organization structure and then we'll move forward and complete uh the entire organization theory i hope you like the lesson if you did do not forget to subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon because you will not be able to miss any notifications that i come out with all the very best take care for the exam